Hello, it's the Friday Talkie. What can I tell you? What's happened since last week? The broadband appears to be fixed. We had two engineers come out this time. Normally they only send one, but it was like one guy thought, this is just too much for me, let's get someone else in as well for a second opinion. And I don't know what they did, because I was sitting outside keeping the dogs quiet in the back garden. While it rained, while Andrea was talking to the engineers, because whenever anyone comes around we, we, we take the dogs out because they just go mental. But anyway, yeah, they fixed it, uh, apparently. <laughs> I don't know how reliable it's going to prove, because this happens a lot. We call out, we call BT, they send in the engineer, the engineer fixes it, and within two days it's knackered again. But we'll see. It seems to be working all right at the moment. Uh, other news. Mm, okay, some of you will know I was having investigations for a possible heart trouble. Uh, I'd had a whole load of tests, and the final test was a cardi uh, no, a coronary angiogram. If you're remotely interested in how that went, because I had it done this Tuesday, um, link to the video down there that explains what happened. Not for the faint-hearted or squeamish, and definitely not something to watch if you're going to have the procedure yourself, because it loses nothing in the telling. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm exaggerating any of what I said there, but I, I'm a bit of a drama queen and a wuss when it comes to things like that. So, like I say, it loses nothing in the telling. And, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to watch that if you're going to have it done yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the final result is my heart is absolutely fine. Which is good. I, I feel like a decrepit old man now who's been kicked in the knackers because I'm battered and bruised and everything from the whole procedure and in a small amount of pain. And the iodine kind of messes with your head as well. Iodine contrast that they inject into you. Uh, it, it, mm, supposedly comes out of your system really quickly, like 24 hours or whatever, but it can take longer and while it's still in you, it does... I mean, they say uh, it can cause a headache. Well, it didn't give me a headache, but it just kind of made me feel a bit weird for a while. Anyway, that's pretty much all gone now, which is good. I'm feeling relatively normal if somewhat battered. Um, so that's that. What else can I talk about? I do actually have a topic for today. Um, somewhat unfocused, which might just be my normal mental state, or might be the iodine still knocking around in me, but either way. I kind of have an idea. It's where the console gaming scene well, the manufacturers really are going at the moment. I do think they're kind of, they're a bit lost. They're a bit, they know they need to progress. They know they need to make new systems, but they're not entirely sure where they're going or if they are, I think they're getting it wrong. Um, what do I mean by this? Okay, to my mind, the last really good, proper, traditional gaming system generation was like the PS2, uh, Xbox, GameCube. You bought your console, you took it home, you bought a disc, slapped it in, played it. It was yours. It played on your standard TV. You didn't have to buy anything else to get the most out of it. And that was that. They were self-contained. There was no messing around. No, no limitations. Here's your console. Here's your game plug it in, play it. That was it. And that to me is how console gaming should be. And that's how it was since 1977 or even earlier if you want to count Pong machines all the way up to 2000 and whatever. That's how gaming was on consoles. And then all of a sudden here comes your PS3 and and other consoles and they're getting weird now. They're getting a bit freaky. Nintendo, uh, well alright, Nintendo have always been into innovating with their controllers but they, they just went, to my mind, a step too far with the bloody Wiimote thing and it wrecked, to me, for me, it wrecked gaming on that system. I, you know, we've got one, I don't play it, Andrew doesn't play it, it's just bloody annoying. PS3 well, to get the most out of your PS3, you have to buy a new TV. 
high definition. You know, you've had a standard def definition one for 20, 30, 40 years, whatever, you know, and you've been able to play your games console on it and it looked fine. Now, you've got to buy a new TV. Okay, cool, it looks great. I, we, we've got two high definition tellies in this house now and it they look brilliant for playing games on. Um, Blu-ray, innovation, cool, like that. And then you're getting all your download stuff and I'm um, getting a little bit edgy and then you're getting your restrictive stuff like yeah you can download this or you can buy this game on disc but you can only play it on this or you can only play it online on this one console or maybe t a couple of others they're getting restrictive um, and similar kind of restrictions I believe on the 360 I, could, I haven't got a 360 so I can't comment on that and uh, now we're hearing about the PS4 and here in fact before we go on to the PS4 the um, on live they're kind of taking it all a step further where people are getting used to the downloading game software but on live are streaming their games and I really 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 hope people have learned something because have you heard on live went bust um, they have been bought out. I don't know who by. Someone has bought them. So all of the people who were working for OnLive are, are out of a job. Feel sorry for them. Some sympathy. But uh, OnLive as a company, don't give a crap. I always thought it was a horrendous way of selling games. Because they're not really selling them. They're selling a service. That service, thankfully for the people who paid for their games, will continue by another company. But I really hope the people who are thinking, yeah, that's cool, I'm into that, wake up and see that getting your game streamed to you by a third party or whatever, but by a, a, a company, rather than owning them yourself, is really, really bad for you. It's great for them as a company. Um, you know, they, they can just keep taking money off of you, no problem. But for you, it's crap, because if they fold, and on live did, you you're screwed. All that all those games you paid for, you've you've lost. You can't play them anymore. You couldn't say that about any game previously, except the one. I mean, Steam, where you've got your online verification and stuff. There, you could, you still have the stuff on your hard drive, and I'm sure it would be possible to hack that software to make it run without being hooked into the server. Probably, if Steam ever went broke, stuff like that. But you know, on live, they go bust, you're screwed. So there's that. That's like being seen as the next step for gaming. And Sony are including a streaming games feature on the PS4. And that worries me. I think, fair enough for playing demos. You know, I, I tried on live myself for a while when I had reliable internet a little bit. And I found it interesting as a technology demonstration and interesting for demoing games but I would never pay for access to a full game that served to me like that uh, it's it's crazy and they uh, I hope they just use it on the PS4 for demoing um, because companies can go bust Sony could go bust Sony could just decide yeah we're not going to support this anymore I mean you see it happen um, you can buy games, I mean, what is it? There's a PS2 game that's also available on the PSP. Um, Battlefield style game, first person shooter, team based, blah blah blah. Forgot what it's called, and they've shut the servers down on that now, and it's only like a generation ago. So, um, will Sony continue to serve games if they're streaming them for the PS4 in like another generation or will they just shut all that down because if you've paid for it you want it for life I know I do I know some people they just buy a game they play it and that's it done with finished with me I might want to play it again in 10 years time or 20 or 30 I still play Atari games as you'll have seen um, and you may lose that with this stream stuff but that's not what's really bugging me um, the PS4, I am really, really, I'm concerned because it seems you can no longer 
go one generation without having to buy more stuff to get the most out of your hardware, out of your console. The PS4 is using what they call a 4K display. It's like super duper high definition. So you've gone 30 or 40 years being able to play your consoles on your standard telly. And then the last generation you had to buy a new high definition telly to get the most out of your console. Well, new generation coming up, and guess what? You're going to have to buy another new telly. You're going to have to buy a 4K TV to get the most out of the PS4. Um, no, I, I don't like that. I, you know, I, I know that progress matters, but when you've got to buy a new bloody display device one generation on, I mean, they've already been trying to convince everyone to buy high definition 3D TVs. What the hell? You know, it's like, here's your PS3, but to get the most out of it, buy a high-definition telly. So we do. And then halfway through its life cycle, it's like, hey, if you really want to get the most out of this, buy a high-definition 3D telly. Yeah, I didn't. I would have liked to have, but they were costing like seven or 800 quid, and the price is only just coming down now. But the, the whole buzz is, are they making 3D games for it? I haven't heard or seen of any since Wipeout, so pfft. Why spend the money? But the PS4 is coming out soon, and they want you to buy another new telly. No bloody way. So, uh, yeah, I'm not impressed. I don't like the way things are going at all. And then here's the Wii U, and you've got, like, they're innovating again. Innovation is great, but... I also like things to stay the same. <laughs> <laughs> I like better graphics, but I don't want to have to buy a new display thing. I like clever controllers, but I don't want to have to rewire my brain to work out how to use them without too much effort or thought. And I absolutely don't want to have to look down at my controller when my, you know, big screen there, controller down here... No! I want to be immersed with what's happening on the screen, not what's happening on my controller. So I don't like that either. Some things I, uh, that are going on at the moment I kind of like. I like the idea of the 3DS. Uh, if I had the money I would get one. Um, the PS Vita, technically impressive. Would I buy one? No. I've got a PSP and I never, actually I've got two PSPs and I never play them. Too big to be portable. And, and you can't stick it in your pocket. Um, the games will be like in-depth, big, long, like PS2 stroke PS3 games. Well, I don't want that while I'm out and about. And if I was going to play at home, well, I'd just play on the PS3. So the PSP to me makes no sense whatsoever. Pa gaming on pads at the moment, you know, tablets, the iPhone, iPad type stuff seems to be getting really popular. And I am really interested in this Google Nexus 7 thing. Yeah, who J Boy Pac Man just got one, and he he's got a video up, which is worth going and taking a look at. Where he he, sh he didn't really show what it does. I am hoping he will. I'm hoping he'll show us some of the games on it. But uh, he ranks it's great, and stuff I've read about it so it says it's great. So I am interested in that. But I am very much anti touch screen for gaming. I'm I'm interested in it more as a mobile. Well, not really mobile, but, you know, just a, a computer -y type thing that I can have hooked into my Wi-Fi and do browsing while I'm down in the living room and it's less obtrusive than a laptop. Blah, blah. Anyway, for gaming, touchpad, no. So, interesting device, but I don't want to game on it. The only thing that's coming up that really interests me right now in terms of new gaming hardware is the Ouya. Um, and I'm still... I love the idea of a cheap, open platform that anyone can program for. Great. I dislike the idea of download only and no hardware on it, but what you're going to do um, is the most practical way for independent developers to distribute their software. So, yeah, it's not perfect, but <coughs> with the way everything else and everyone else is going in directions that I personally don't like. I'm not saying they're wrong. They might do really well and they might suit an awful lot of people, but they don't suit me. The Ouya is the only thing that I'm finding interesting. But I mean, it's not a, it's not a step forward in terms of gaming performance, so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> 
is this going to be the last generation of gaming hardware that I'm going to buy? Couldn't tell you. Probably not. But I am getting pretty disillusioned with the new stuff and the new things that they want to do. The, the forcing you to buy new TV bloody thing, display, whatever, to get the most out of it. When we only just bought one last generation. And the restricting what you can do and how you can play it and how often you can play it on whatever, blah, blah. You know. Don't like. Don't want. Uh, yeah, there's me being a cranky old bastard, eh? Yes, before I forget, because I was going to say this at the start before, and I didn't. Um, the Games Shed featured me on their website this week. Yes, um, they sent me a, a questionnaire or a good few weeks ago, and <laughs> I got so distracted with all the other stuff that's been going on, it took me ages to fill it out. But I eventually got around to filling it out and uh, sent it back, and it was up on their website like the same night almost, I think. So a big thank you to the guys at the Game Shed. Check it, the URL to their website or the feature with me on it is down there. Also check out their um, YouTube channel because it's really cool. I can't remember if I've shouted them out in the past, but if I haven't, go check them out because they're fun and good and worth watching. Um, shout out time. Let me swing the camera around. Okay, here we are then. Exploring the Vintage. Channel name Dave Webster. What can I tell you about Dave? Dave does gameplay videos with commentary and I really like the way he does his commentary. It is relaxed, unassuming and intelligent and I like that. It's, it's something you don't... well you do come across but you know um, not every day. And he's done a weekend waffle here, which um, you could liken to a Friday talkie. It's, it's a similar kind of format. He sits there, camera pointing at him, and talks about stuff. And this, you've got to watch this video. He, it just, is good. <laughs> he's got this relaxed manner, and he is very unassuming, but in t it's an intelligent topic spoken about in an intelligent manner, which is really nice to see. He gets you thinking about stuff. Lots of very varied gameplay videos on various different systems from 8-bit through to, I mean, what have we got here? Is that the... I'm not sure what one that's on. Is that on the the Saturn or the... the I can't remember. No, that's on the 32 because I remember now. I did watch it. I've watched a few. And they are really good. SX1 system overview. It is a really, what have we got here? Joystick? Alien 3 joystick. You know, he covers a lot of ground system, like looking at bits for systems, looking at hardware and the games, and I'm hoping he does more of these weekend waffles because that was really good. And he covers games that I personally like. A lot of them I've played, and if I haven't, they're ones that I'm interested in. This is, this is my kind of gaming. Which means this is my kind of channel. I like this. I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. Could could be another Lawn Boys post or Ed T here. Because um, he's good. Dave Webster. Exploring the Vintage. Check him out. See what you think. Subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, nah. Here we go. This is where I go a weird colour now. Cool. Because that always happens. I turn the camera back round and the white balance has gone weird. How do you dig the t-shirt? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. Andrea got that for me. I don't know where from. But she's good like that. Well, closing comments. What's coming up? <laughs> More of the same? Maybe. Um, do you know, I haven't really thought about it. There will be more TV Boy videos, but I'm going to chuck in some other stuff as well. Obviously, I, I want to do more system reviews and more joystick of the day type stuff, but I'm, I'm going to chuck in some gameplay from other systems, because while I can sit and play TV Boy games day in, day out, and churn out the videos for them, I do know that people get bored if I stick to one system for too long, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit there. 
Um, don't know what I'll play. Couldn't tell you. But other than that, you know what to expect by now. <laughs> Whatever I say I'm going to do, I probably won't. So, uh, yeah, more of the same in that respect. I think I'm done. Um, yeah, probably. Thank you for watching. <laughs>